Next up, we have most important news. Yeah. Which is a weird category. But it is. We should. I just felt we should have something in here that's like. I look back on the year. This year. There was some. Like, there was some stuff uh, that we should. We should. So we've got uh, the leak of the E3 2020 slide deck, which was hysterical. Uh, Blizzard punishing Hong Kong protesters and the speech afterwards from the the head of Blizzard, is it? Yes. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, well, he was the head of something. He's, he's high up. Can't remember his name. The the one at BlizzCon. The, yeah, at that one. Yeah. Uh, Bungie take Destiny back from Activision. Yeah. Uh, Anthem, just all of Anthem. That's really good. I saw you add that. And yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not touching that. That's... Uh, Ubisoft delaying everything because of Breakpoint. Yeah. Um. So like smaller stuff, sir. So Ubisoft. Link everything yeah, because so of Breakpoint. Breakpoint, Ghost Recon Breakpoint came out and then they were like, oh shit, we lost $750 million. We're delaying Watch Dogs. Everything. And yeah. whatever the other games they were. But they were like, they delayed a bunch of stuff that was supposed to come out in March. Yeah, it was upsetting mainly because it meant that we don't get Watch Dogs yeah. Union, which I was Legion. quite excited. Legion, sorry. Legion. Which I was quite excited about. Totally. Um, but they, just, they moved a whole bunch of stuff back and you're just like, how were you not... It was a weird moment because it was like, you have to understand, like, I don't understand what Ubisoft internally were thinking with that. Yeah. Where you're like, this is a game that came out a year after Wildlands? Something like that, yeah, it was or, quick. It was, it was quick. quick. And you're like, it's a lot of the same stuff. It's the same year you put out Division 2, which, by all accounts, is a better version of the... It's of the same sort of lure shooter idea. And a better yeah. version And a better of version it, of it, yeah. Um, Which has some real thought behind it. And then you're like, oh yeah, that wasn't good enough and we've lost a bunch of money yeah so we have to now but to be fair like rather than going like other companies might cough cough ea rather than saying like oh shit we lost a bunch of money we need to get more stuff out there now to recoup that they're like okay we need to make sure watchdog fucking hits Nails it, yeah and all of this stuff really lands so we're gonna give them more time so yeah, yeah sure I will. I appreciate That's that. Understandable. It was just a really weird moment of, especially like, when Breakpoint got as slated as it totally. Did, yeah. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. Bungie taking Destiny back. We talked about this a bit in yeah. best moment. Um, but no, then, the twenty 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 XX. Yeah. Yeah, but them being able to take the reins of the game away from Activision and do it themselves, and them very earnestly in their own uh, the video that they put out when they did it was just like we're doing this because we care. And we're doing this because we want to do this right, and we want to do. The... I remember. I remember you messaging me going, "They just called it an MMO." Yeah, like the 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 the. <laughs> I can never remember the guy's name, but the guy that is like the the head designer for yeah. Destiny said, "We want to turn this into the shooter MMO it always was." And I was like, "That's the first time they've actually called it an MMO." They were very Activision were very apprehensive about calling it an MMO yeah. for some because, reason. Because I think the word MMO turns people off. Yeah, because yeah. uh, there have been too many of them. But yeah, um, yeah so them very honestly just take it it's the first time i've ever seen genuine from a company that big yeah a genuine thing of like we're doing this because we care about it totally and we we want to do right by this and yeah. and it does it, and, it, and like it'd be one thing to say all that but then it looks like they're actually doing it like mm. the stuff they've put out post yeah they, they, the, they've the done that, it and then they've backed it up yeah and the stuff that they've put out since then has would have been influenced by like that the stuff that's coming out now would have happened with the knowledge that they're going to be on their own yeah so this is them now going yeah this is what we they are, want they are, they're slowly pivoting it back to where they want yeah. it to be and you can see it physically totally. happen which to the it. point where i was like i should probably buy some silver yeah like i feel like throw i should, some cash at I should it. throw some cash out like yes i bought this game on two platforms now but like yeah I, I, probably... I, I I threw silver at it because I wanted something I can't remember what totally. it was I oh it was the new warlock finisher that was uh, I just haven't found anything like Bungie like the one please give me give me some grungy stuff like I'm grungy done stuff. with like medieval shiny armor I don't like your I'm like, telling you, if you, Roman like if you Roman finished, inspired if, if you had uh, 100% of the battle pass last season you would have got the the universal ornaments for the vex armor and that is totally your shit. Really? That is all like robot parts and wires and yeah. I wear it. Oh, all I did. The time. I did awesome. see that. I yeah. did see that. Hopefully, it comes around again on the maybe the Eververse, yeah. and we'll see. Um, but yeah, no, that it was. It was. It was cool. It was one thing. It was one thing for them to for that to happen. It's kind of the other part of the story is like it's kind of wild. Activision let them go because like I know, yeah. what do Activision have? Modern Warfare. They have Modern Warfare. Yep, and all the Blizzard stuff. They have Blizzard. Yeah. Do they have, they, have, they have a sports thing? No. 
No, they don't have a sports thing. I have Everyone no idea. Skills. Like, I'm trying to write, like, what is supporting that company now? Like, Modern Warfare is doing all right. Blizzard and Call of Duty, I guess. But, like, oh, man, it just it seems like such a crazy thing for them to let go. Uh, but, yeah. Anthem. Let's talk about Anthem. Fuck me. Like, so this all started way back, oh, like, two Jesus. E3s ago, or whatever it was. Was it two E3s? When it was announced. When they first announced it. Yeah, it was at least two And it was, E3s like, ago. end of, it was, like, your one more thing, end of press conference chat. Yeah. And we sat there in silence because it was like, it's a mech game. It's a looter shooter. Yep. It looks great. Look at everybody flying around. It's all crazy. Yep. They're doing their fake comms chat thing that we like, even though nobody else does. Yep. It's like, this thing this thing looks great. And I said, yep. Anthem, I was like, man, that it's looks... It's in Frostbite. It's in it looks Frostbite. Nice. It looks amazing. Got closer and closer to release date. The second E3, they were like a bit less chatty about it. Didn't show a lot. No, they had that. They, they did. The, they did a playthrough of actual gameplay, and you're like, the that gameplay. looks like. And you're like, yep, that looks like what that thing needs to be. I hope it's not that for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. And then that game came out. Well, actually, before that, I was in the closed alpha. Oh yeah. Which I, I didn't stream out. I streamed, streamed to you. Yeah, we looked at the closed we looked alpha. At the, the closed alpha, and then the beta came out, and I was like, hmm, I'm getting some real Destiny One vibes from this. Yeah. Where, like, seems pretty broken. Like, there's not a not lot. Not even of... broken. Just like. No variety. Like, oh yeah, oh yeah. It is all just... And also, like, it felt a little bit janky. We were like, these all like, at least in Destiny, very quickly you got like, you could start headshotting stuff early and feel a little bit powerful. Yeah. Like everything in that game was a bullet sponge. Yeah, really spongy. Like from the start. Yeah. I'm like okay, right. But I'm sure there's a a thing. A thing. And then that game came out, and you're just like, it's the same stuff, and also it's wildly broken. Oh yeah. And like. It was we patched a, in a social space, like yeah. at the tail end of that game, and like it was, it was busted on release when people were playing it. It was like every everything's still a bullet sponge. Like you don't feel powerful regardless of how much you level up. Yep. There were like the fucking end level quests that are literally just open this door by doing a billion different things. Totally. That you then just opened up and hit E on a thing and left, yep. and that what the fuck and was then, that and. And so like and then people were just like astounded by this thing that they put out and then they were like oh don't worry like the cataclysm which is their big raid things coming yeah. and all this good stuff and then jason schreier did his thing which was like the big jason schreier article this game was fucked and has done so much to bioware internally yeah. that it's just like it's... like they pulled gate like people off every other game to get this the working. fact that the fact that people got pulled off of dragon age 4 to right. do this has upset me greatly. <laughs> like Dragon Age Four is now like a twenty twenty two game yeah, or something super like that. Late. Like it's um, and also like it, it's the dumbest part of that whole expose. But like that game was not called Anthem until the E three presentation where it was yeah, first shown. Yeah, and you're like like literally like days before that presentation, that was when the name was chosen. And they had to. They then had to come up for a reason for it to be called Anthem because the th- whatever it was they called it before like had some was it copyright thing? I th- yeah, I think I think weird... they said it wasn't. It wasn't copyrightable enough. Yeah, like they couldn't. Oh, that's what it was like. They couldn't like you couldn't add a TM it. after. Well, it. Yeah, um, so they, you had to call it anthems. They then had to come up with the whole like anthem of creation thing. Yeah, that was which and that's the thing. Like maybe all that story existed, but like the idea of like we came up with a name and then built a story around yeah. it. Like it's bizarre way of dealing with it. Bits about that game and there's stuff in that game that's that's cool. Like the flying about stuff, the Iron Man shit. Yeah, is pretty people good. like the Iron Man stuff. Yeah, um, but then like the loot system's fucked. Yep, and there's like seven guns. Yeah, there's like not many guns, and there was like a time where your starter gun was the best gun in the game because of how weird damage scaling worked, yeah. and it was ju- it just was fucked for so long. And continued to be. It, conti- it still continues to be totally to fucked. The point where like they, put, they, put, they put the cataclysm, and it was like, okay, sure, and then like the roadmap was like, yeah, they discarded we're, the roadmap. We're discarding our roadmap yeah. to focus on the core game, and then the, the reports now are like they are revamping they are doing a final fantasy 14 to this thing and they Good, are doing yeah. the whole if they thing can, if they can do what 14 did and pull it out on a second try fair enough and like and again like, it, has, it has now gotten to the point where i have considered buying anthem on sale purely for when they redo it if i get some sort of benefit totally. yeah, yeah. And i was like that if that game drops, do i do i want to hedge a bet and spend eight quid on anthem is it only ma- eight quid it's like 10 or something okay but, uh-huh. um to maybe get a benefit when they revamp it and i was like i don't know if it's worth it but... it's possible but like and it's also like such a non ea thing to do yeah like i expected 
Like, once that game, like, really hit its low point and they abandoned the roadmap, I imagine that was it. I thought I was it was like, dead, yeah, yeah. Game's dead, they're gonna, they're gonna sunset it, they're gonna do the whole, like, it's it's going away. Yeah. So for them, them, well, they haven't officially said anything, but, like, all the reports coming out are being like, no, they're actually reinvesting the time into this, where it's yeah. basically become another game. Yeah. You're like, why is... Like, there must be something there. I was going to say, I don't know if it's them trying to, like, save face or whatever, but it's not going to help in you that have situation. Not a, you have a history of just, like, burning yeah, bridges, burn like, bridge. as soon as stuff goes wrong. It's such it's a like, weird nah, thing. Good. Yeah. Um, so there must be something to that game that they're not. Um, the E3 slide deck, like... This was... so this was like so funny. The, the, coming off of this year's, or 2019's E3, and being, like show seems real sparse yeah, and like not a lot there the two big companies are not officially there and or two of the three big companies are not officially yeah. there and like what is the show like there was a lot of like you, you like listening to people on the ground and they were like well i heard you drink sellers yep. here this year like a lot of things that aren't video games yeah exactly kind of kicking around and you go starts looking more and more like a consumer show yeah so you're like okay they have to, one of two things are going to happen e3 becomes something different entirely like they go full packs yeah and just become like no we're advertising this for everybody a thing. So, yeah. or it's like e3 scales down and really goes away where you're like if you, if you... yeah so and then the, the flip side of that was like 2020 is the year that consoles get announced right yeah. this is a Bang console moment. year yeah so an e3 that is on the ropes and you're a sony or a mike well microsoft will be there because they own a they want to. Um, oh yeah, they own the building venue they? Yeah. there, so of course they're yeah. going to be there at that time. But like, if you're Sony, like, do you just not do it and just like, well, you follow the PS? Do you just have another like big state of play thing? And do you, well, do not even a state of play. Like, remember the PS4 was like what would they call it? I can't remember what it was. State of play. Yeah. Was it a state of play? Um, but like for their PS4 stuff was like we have an event in February that's got a bunch of details, and then we've got a different event in. August? No, I can't remember when it was. Like yeah. early, early summer or, or late spring, which was like, and here's the rest of the details. Yeah, we'll see E3 for games. Yeah, and you're like, do you just do that and just skip the E3 bit and just be like, here's a bunch of games. Yeah, but you kind of, but the, the problem with car, uh, console hardware is like you need people to get hands on it and actually like play it, use so it, can, yeah. so they can write up and say like, this controller feels great. Like yeah. you need those stories. So like. They're obviously going to be there, and like the ESA are not going to go. No, fuck you. Yeah. You weren't here last year. Like, of course they're going to come back. They're going to yeah. If 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 Sony comes to you and says we want a demo, you go exactly. okay. Here's your space. Like, so then you go okay. So they're going to do something this year. What the fuck they're going to do? And then this E E three slide deck. Slide deck so this is a slide deck specifically. Uh, I'll um, go back and listen to the podcast where we talk about this. Yeah. But like, the slide deck was specifically for marketer uh, marketers and investors for third party companies to go like, here's what. We're offering you as a as a way of selling to give us money to exactly. go to E3 yeah. to exhibitors, and it was just all of this like we want to inspire FOMO and like it was all of the these... amount of the amount of instances of the word influencer and in that slide deck mm. was about six too many, and it was... and it was like oh yeah we want to get influencers in but we don't want to pay them yeah so and you're just like it's all of these things that like I understand that this is a slide deck that. It's not supposed to public are not supposed to see. Yeah. But like you're still sending this to marketers who like admittedly probably don't want to pay influencers either. No. But like this is the th- like there's something about the unwritten rules being written down that is so shocking. Yeah, to when me, when, when, when like, the back when the back room stuff comes to the front room yeah. and finally gets shown to yeah. everybody and everybody goes, Oh no, that's actually what they're doing. Yeah. Like they're like, yeah. of course they don't want to pay influencers. They are pivot- but, like they're pivoting towards influencers youtubing yeah all that stuff like, hey by the way we have a bunch of like we have a bunch of people in lines for like hours for games that are not released yet yeah do we, you know the fucking st- the co- the comic really like of the the guys in the boardroom and it's like we have this problem what should we do and the first two are ridiculous things and yeah. then the third guy says the thing that should actually fix it and gets thrown out a window yeah like we have a bunch of cues for people who want to do it. so what what should we do Maybe we should fix the queues. No, we should sell things to people in the in queues. The queues yeah. and you're just like make the queues what are and experience. The queuing experience, right. I think, was a term. Like yeah. the only thing I can imagine is that they know it's a console year that people are going to pay attention, so they are going to yeah. take this as like maybe this is the swan song. Maybe it's them just like firing guns into the air and going, "Let's drive off into the sunset." Do you want right? to go back? Do you want to go back to like 
late nineties era E three when everybody was doing like wild parties and like all just sure. throw their money at But everything. like this is this is the, this is our swan song guys, let's yeah. throw it out. Let's you get, get ten inch your big consoles and then no more E threes. Totally. It. Fuck it, booth babes are back. You're oh, just God. like no wants like, that. That's not... you, but like every part of that slide deck was like it felt like they have a hundred percent missed the point of anyone who's not a marketer. They've shot a target that nobody wants them to shoot. Well, or like this amount of people do, but yeah. the people who care about Ethereum are over here. Yeah, and they like, don't give a shit, no, no, right? Yeah, um, pointing at the thing that says queuing experience. Exactly. Like, like, would you like to spend three hours in a queue for a game that's already out? No. no. Um, I mean, the press don't do that anyway. But exactly. Like, still... But like that—that that was the thing. Like seeing it all written down as like here's the here's our here are our priorities. For a console year E3, yeah. it's just like, yeah, it seems wow, yeah, it was crazy, yeah. And then Blizzard Hong Kong, just, just over one over. of the worst handlings of a thing I've ever seen. I mean, one of the worst, like, not, not so that go, to go back at the origin <sighs> it of was it. So bad. A a chain. I can't remember the name of the player, but a Chinese player won a big Hearthstone tournament. Hearthstone player, right? Yeah, big Hearthstone player. And in the post match conversation with the casters and him use that as a platform to say hey i'm from hong kong supporting the hong kong my 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 bar my country is fucked up right now supporting hong kong like pulled on a gas mask all that stuff to which the casters kind of didn't say anything and in fact hid under the desk for a really long time and were like which to be fair that was real funny it was funny but that's not how you handle that situation but i mean like what would you do as a caster in that situation like i'd probably do exactly that i would play it off as like a we're gonna get some shit for this. Yeah, and sure. like, and shit they did oh, get gotcha. for this. Where they afterwards, um, with very little warning, uh, stripped him of his winnings and banned him from the game for a year. I think yeah. it was. Yeah, it was like hundred thousand dollars or something, yeah. and stripped and said you can't play in professional Hearthstone anymore, which is how that guy yep. makes his living. Yeah, so yeah. that's a problem. Yeah, internet flipped out, saying, "What the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you doing this?" Um kind of drew connections between the fact that Blizzard has a lot of investment from Chinese companies yeah. and all that stuff, kind of put a little bit together and said kind of like, they maybe don't want to piss off China, so... Like like a lot of US a lot, like a lot of companies, companies don't want, don't to, want to, do to piss right off now. China, so they... See came, NBA. <laughs> yeah, came down really hard on this guy because of the whole Hong Kong thing, um, and everybody flipped out and were like, this is not right, you shouldn't be doing this. They then fired the casters? Fired the cat. Mm. Or they released they fired, them from their contracts I think or they released like... them, yeah. They they saw the outrage and came back before BlizzCon and said, we'll give him his winnings back and we'll shorten the thing. Six months. Six months, not a year. Yeah. Still outrageous. Did um, they give him all his winnings or did they give him part of his winnings? I thought they gave him all his winnings back. Oh yeah, it was, it was all his winnings and half the suspension, half the suspension was what it was. Too. Yeah. They okay. did that. And then BlizzCon happens. So and then the run up so the run up to BlizzCon is then gonna be like The run up to BlizzCon what the is everybody going are they oh, gonna do Oh shit yeah. this is gonna go down. Like not only like Blizz, Blizzard like the people who would go to BlizzCon are already like super switched on to like all of this stuff that's happening. They yeah. are not shy about saying and also following the year with the Diablo Immortal fiasco. Oh yeah, that was yeah. which was like and to be clear, that was all fans being dicks. Yeah. Like yeah. all of that was just like this is not my. This is not the Diablo I wanted. So fuck you. Yeah. Like they're already coming off. As funny as hot. funny as the um, do you not have phones line? Yeah, was, exactly. That was. Yeah. Do you not have phones? Um. So a lot of people were already coming onto that pissed off from last year. Yeah. To for them to then go, oh by the way, we don't want to piss off China. Yeah. Everyone was like, okay, they have two options here for the yeah. Blizzard keynote for this year. They either completely. Ignore it. Yeah. Pretend it didn't happen. Say and then hope that the Diablo Four and Overwatch Two announcements paper over the cracks. Yeah. And it's fine. Or they completely acquiesce and they go, "We're sorry. Here's an apology. Here's why we did it. Here's what all all yeah. this stuff. Like really explain it and put a bookend on it and yeah. say like we're changing in the future." Blah, blah, blah. And instead, they did the secret third option that nobody did, which was kind of in the middle but not really. Which was and... somewhere in the middle, which said like. We understand a lot of you were annoyed. It was it was it was the most um we're sorry you got upset. Totally. It was a hundred percent apologies. That, yeah. We're sorry that this came out. We're, we're sorry like, that oh, you were we annoyed. want we want to be inclusive and like We have a commitment pr- to commitment and we want to prove that video games can change the world. And it's like you probably could have done that by like not firing the guy and taking his winnings. Yep. Um 
It, it, it was the worst thing you could have done. Like, it was just... You didn't apologise for it did, anything. It didn't make anyone involved happy. No one was happy, except for maybe the people that run Blizzard. They maybe thought it was great. Got hate. <laughs> Fixed it. Meanwhile, outside there are people in Winnie the Pooh costumes. Inside there are people in Winnie the Pooh costumes. There are in people, the crowd outside at the there are, there are people in May costumes, because that became a thing. Yeah. There are the whole bunch of shit. And just didn't... Do they didn't do her. anything about it. Like, and there was no like. And instead, then just went Diablo. There was no oh, announcement what? of like procedural changes. There was no like rule changes. There was no clarifications. There was no like. No. Here's our policy going forward. None of that. It was just like, sorry, and then moved on. Yeah. And you're just like, oh, well, this is how this is going to go. So... Right? And it's kind of, ch- it's chilling, right? Like, it's a really weird like. Yeah. This is where your priorities are sitting, and like. There's definitely, like, because Blizzard was the first one in our industry, or the industry where we follow anyway for yeah. us to do, like, the NBA have been dealing with this for a while, Yeah. but, like, well, actually, the NBA stuff happened roughly Relatively around the same time. Recently, yeah. But, like, the fact that Blizzard were, like, and the initial things, it was like, oh, it's because Tencent invested with them, like, they're in, they're in the pocket of China, and yeah. you're like, ah, uh, let's not get fucking conspiracy theory about it. The easiest thing for them to come out and be like, we're sorry, here's what we're doing yeah for them to have not done that and just fucking like we can't touch this yeah for so long is just like it was okay, it, maybe there's some maybe there's something to this yeah um so strange it was utterly bizarre in a list of yeah it was it was just so strange it was just so it, strange to watch. watching watching that a major company handle something that badly has not totally. happened in a while but it's yeah. very strange um so that went so which one right? is, probably yeah um, that was such a for me it's thing. that or this the e3 thing yeah i think i think blizzard wins with slide deck and then uh, probably anthem anthem was yeah big like anthem was like the 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 premier game from a giant studio like bioware just completely shitting the for bed a, from for, a com- for, a, for a company that especially for bioware for a company that i held in such high regard for sure that already misstepped with Mass Effect Andromeda. Wildly misstepped. And then do it again. Because everybody was like, oh man, Mass Effect Andromeda was really bad, but they're still working on Anthem, and that thing could pull well, because, them into a new age. Well, because they pulled... I can't remember exactly how the story went, but they pulled people off of Anthem for Mass Effect, right? And then when and Mass then Effect... Back, and then yeah. put them back on there and yeah. pulled more people in. And like, in. writers and stuff left during Anthem, and like, it was a whole Also, thing. that's one of the... Like, that's one of the reasons why that... Um, uh, uh, Star Wars game get canned yep. because they like it was so weird not only did it fail it took a bunch of stuff down with it yeah. and you're just like oh, just, yeah, but no yeah way. so most important news was the Blizzard Hong Kong handling still not resolved nope like as of start Absolutely of 2020 not. like still uh, not resolved with the leaked E3 2020 <sighs> slide deck with Q experiences FOMO bad FOMO and the influencers and influencers. all the terrible words oh. uh, and Anthem as runners up a lot of weird news this year it's crazy so next up we have best soundtrack so we should be we usually do this the other way around it doesn't matter um so best soundtrack is the best soundtrack so this is um includes like the licensed music for a game the music for a game but it's the it's the music the musical experience as a yeah, whole. Yeah, so it's it's not just how good are the songs. No. It's like how does it use its music. It's use of music it, yeah. as well. Is, is how, how, how well is, does music feature in said video game? Exactly. Um, so is we this have... first one again that came out this year? Yes. Okay. It came right. out in January. Just checking. Can you Google that very quickly while I'm, while I'm reading this out? Um, so, best soundtrack. Um, the Eternal Castle Remastered. Apex Legends. Devil May Cry 5. Devil May Cry 5. Oh, Sorry, fuck. <laughs> Um, Out of Wilds, Sayonara Wild Hearts. Yeah, it un- came out this year. Untitled Goose Game, Disco Elysium, Kingdom Hearts 3, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Really? Okay. Yeah. Head the Space Outlaw. I didn't see you add that. Um, Plague Tale Innocence and Ape Out yep. are things. Talk to me about. Well, so Eternal Castle did come out. Yes, it did. So this is generally because it's a banging soundtrack, but also like. It just came out. It came out at the very start of the year. Yeah, I remember because it's the first thing on my game list. Yeah. So it was the first thing that came out. Um, no, it's a, it's a banging soundtrack, but also like it really fits that game. I don't think it's gonna hang here. Yeah. I just want to say like it's a good, it was a good solid soundtrack. soundtrack yeah. You know, um, Apex Legends. 
is this just for that theme? I didn't put it on. You did. Did I? Yeah. Oh, okay. It's probably just for that. Uh, the, the Apex Legend, the, the music is... It has gotten better the longer that game has gone on because yes. it's become more a lot more diverse. Yes. It's mainly the opening theme, but they they play it in different ways now that characters have their own music packs. Yeah, totally. So that there is different instrumentations. And but they have that core... Um, what's the word? Um, phrase? Yeah. That like four note the f- like thing. The four note thing in the middle like crops up all the time. So the, the best the best one I've seen so far is for the Christmas event this right. year where it had the four note thing but it was done in this weird sort of like rock big band thing. It had oh. like heart- it's so cool. Okay. It's an awesome thing. I'll, I'll let that. you hear it but it was good. Um, I'll also say like speaking of uses of music like the fact that that soundtrack intelligently morphs during that initial section the drop, of the game yeah, yeah, yeah. where it's like the character select and then it morphs into the point where you actually drop and it kicks in it, yeah and then it does it the drop finishes really correctly well. when yeah. you land and all that that's a smart really smart thing yeah, yeah. devil cry 5 oh man that fucking soundtrack is the worst <laughs> but <laughs> fuck it's so good yeah, it, it's imagine... not it's not good but it's fucking great i kind like, of imagined is... that was going to be your description for this oh it's so, so terrible devil trigger is <sighs> it's the worst bad. it's so bad but it's amazing it's exactly what that game it's is it's exactly what that game is it is loud it is dumb it is it makes no fucking sense a lot of the time but like Devil Trigger on its own is a perfect encapsulation of what that thing is the, the soundtrack at yes. all where it is it's loud and it's stupid and it doesn't make any sense but it talks about guns and flipping around all it crazy does, it does and... the the cardinal sin of mentioning a game mechanic in the lyrics oh but that's so good though yeah i, I know um, but it's bad and it's like but it, and it is like just trashy enough where like the female vocals are just kind of bad enough and the guitars are all just overdriven in the wrong way and it feels it, like the lyrics are translated from japanese yeah exactly and it yeah. is it is perfect and the rest of that soundtrack is all just like overdriven mental guitars that like kick in at the like kick in at the start of combat and fade out at the end with like a single power card it's effective and it reminds me a, a lot really, of like 90s video games yeah it's a really effective video game soundtrack it's not good by no, any means it's effective but it's an effective video game soundtrack Fair. um out of wilds it's a gorgeous soundtrack might actually stand up in here because it does a lot of the, like on top of the music itself has been great like the amount of times like the nature of that game the amount of times you'd lift off from that first planet and hit space and like that yeah you, the, the triggers in. start yeah. and like it, it starts triggering different things at different points but there's a really great moment where um did I talk about this yet no I'll save it okay. but there's a really good musical moment later um, later in that game but it, it's genuinely also a very very good soundtrack like I've listened so to yeah, it a the, bunch the, I, I've listened to a lot as well as much as I, had, I haven't played a lot of the Outer Worlds yeah. uh, Outer Wilds. Wilds fuck um, I, I've i listened to that soundtrack a lot it plays a lot on both my love of um, mm. the ability of electronic mm. musicians yep. but also my folky heart there's a lot of really a good lot of like banjo and yes. uh, good acoustic because it's actually it's, like that, it's it? part of the it plays into part of the, the story as well because the four explorers that go off from the original planet as well like when you find them on the different planets they're all playing different yeah parts you, of... you, you do like a lot of like campfire stuff and, yeah so like yeah. the four original explorers have set up camps on different planets and that's how you that's your entry point into all those planets is like go find the four explorers and they'll get you right. started yeah and each of them is like so like one's like literally playing the bongos one of them's just twiddling on a guitar yeah and that you hear them throughout space and you follow them it's, it's like it's a, it's a really cool variant soundtrack yeah. that i've heard does well in totally. terms of like how yeah. it is used sorry we've had some technical difficulties we've had to switch cameras to see if this is any better so apologies if the quality has changed um sign our world hearts, sign our world hearts. Um, it's all music it's all music it is also probably a thing i'll fight harder for in original track because a lot of the music is good yeah but I like the, I like the soundtrack. It's more it. there's a couple of tracks that are really really fucking hot good. bangers. Hot bangers, I yeah. believe, is what the kids say. So I'll maybe come back to that later. But yeah. it's a good, it is a good soundtrack. A good soundtrack. I, I enjoyed my day at work listening to that soundtrack yes. and being all, oh, it's Carly Rae Jepsen again. Oh, I remember Emotion. That was <laughs> yep. a good album. I listened to that album. Oh, yeah, I, that caused you to listen to Carly Rae Jepsen. Which was, she's she's talented. Yeah, she is. Um, Untitled Goose Game. 
this is this is all use of music. This is all use of music. That is that piano soundtrack that is entirely locked into like the stealth mechanics. The stealth mechanics of the goose just like like he sneaks up he sneaks up on things and the the piano kicks in with like a very like basic bass line. Yeah, like a sneaking bass line. And then either you get the thing you want, there's a triumphant sort of thing and you waddle away. Yeah. Or you get caught and the piano goes manic and just starts. It was, the thing about it was like, when I saw that in that original trailer, I was like, oh, that's a really cool trailer treatment to yeah. add that soundtrack. And I was like, there's no way they can do that dynamically. And they actually they totally did, did Yeah, it's a really like, impressive It's thing. really good use of music. Yeah. Um, Disco Elysium has a, an interesting soundtrack. Yeah, it's more the, the, the soundtrack really backs up the kind of general emotion of that game. Where again, it's all supposed to be very like dreamlike and stuff like it's, that. It really sounds like they scored, uh, like fever dream. Yeah, like, so it, they they they've scored your fever dream if your fever dream was set in a coastal town. Yeah, like it's um, you you told me I actually looked into this. And I didn't realize it was done by people. Like there's a band, oh, like British um, Sea Power, British Sea Power, who have are contri- either contributed it or done the whole. They thing did the whole soundtrack. Not. Yeah, there's band from the nineties, which is amazing because it is this kind of like weird seaside sort of like not folk but it is this weird seaside electronic sort of music totally where it yeah. sounds like it is moving in like waves and but that also attributes to the the dream like everything being very like dynamic and moving and like totally. you're not quite sure what's real and what's like not. i really like, and even the even the stuff that's not like tonal like the stuff that is actual music playing in the world like the stuff in the the hotel lobby for yeah, instance yeah the whirling rags yeah is like is really it becomes good. it becomes very um it, it becomes almost uh, like we were talking about in the outer world where every area has its own distinct yes not like music and you yes. start becoming very familiar with it and yeah it's cool. this is, it was like it was a cool kind of different sort of soundtrack yep. but, yeah yeah uh, kingdom hearts 3 you like disney music disney yeah. make good music don't they sure there's a lot of that in kingdom hearts yeah i, I i'm just putting it in mainly because there's like a lot of they take a lot of really famous like Disney music and songs and like do it as like an orchestrated instrumentation. I assume this was there for the entire one to one recreation of the Let It Go video. I mean, there's that as well. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Um, obviously, there's all, there's all the like classic Kingdom Hearts tracks and stuff in like Akari and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. in it, but it's mainly in there because I was really impressed by. Right? This was the fucking Yutido Karu and Skrillex. Skrillex did the main theme. Oh, yeah. wow. I'd forgotten about and that. And hell, that song is wild, but yeah. It's crazy. That's the thing that exists. It, it was just there's so many things on that soundtrack that are just weird, and the Disney songs are really good. Yeah. Hearing hearing Disney songs done in a full orchestra is a weird thing, but yep. they pull it off really well. Um, not gonna win or anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well. Pokemon Sword Shield. It's just got really catchy tunes. Okay. Like it's just it's a really okay. nice soundtrack. Like all the 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 battles all have really good music. The towns all have really good music. All the characters have their own unique themes that you yeah, become yeah. very familiar with. The thing I like the most is that, and you'll hear it when we talk about best uh, original track, is that for some of the battles that take place in the giant football stadiums, because this is supposed to be Britain. Right, right, yeah, yeah. The song that plays for the gym leader battles is, uh, it's a good tune, but towards the end of it, the crowd start coming in with their, like, football right. chants. Right, I remember you telling me this. Yeah. So they start chanting along to the music and doing their whole, like, football thing, yeah, yeah, yeah. and it really adds to the kind of, like, emotion of the thing. It's really cool. Nice. Um, but it's just, it's like a nice soundtrack for okay. really cool tunes that i just okay just wanted Fair to enough. give a thing to hypnospace outlaw i love the hypnospace outlaw really soundtrack. it's so different and evocative and it's just like this do you remember the early days of the internet 90s music thing and it just some of the and some of the soundtracks even for doing that style are really yeah. good yeah totally and it is like you're just surfing these really early web pages of the internet and you find there's like really good ambient music but then you get into the whole here's this musician that has his own page it, it did fucking chowder man has a whole album that it did remind me of like ending up on weird like final fantasy websites with midis playing in the background yeah exactly it's just that and it is and it is it has the original tracks are all really cool and they have all that weird midi early internet yeah. thing but then you get into Fucking Chowder Man. The, the Chowder Man is... You just keep saying the word Chowder Man. No, because it is, the, the, it is the, the guy on the internet who's called Hot Dad. Yes. Who, it's him. Yeah. But he's made, made this whole other persona. Yep. And it's great. It's so awesome. There's, there's, there's more music in that game than there needs to be. Yeah. 
there's and two the, whole album yeah. worth of music on that and it's separated between here's all the original tracks and here's all the dumb musician tracks that yeah. are it's great yep. i love that it soundtrack is, to death. um plague tale innocence actually stood out for me musically it does it doesn't do the thing you expect it to do which is just like here's some real like diegetic like old france like yeah. medieval music it actually does some really interesting um instrumentation along with it yeah and also the point where like they are more than happy to just like scrape some violins when bad shit's happening like all right they do a lot of using stuff. instruments in weird ways yeah like they'll do stuff where like the some of the stealth sections where like it does the metal gear like caution alert thing kind of where yeah. like somebody will see something in the distance but like if they get close enough they'll actually do the alert and like the first time it happens or it's multiple times when it happens even later on when like you you can't see it and like something happens suddenly and there's just this like somebody just beating the shit out of a violin for like a sting yeah it's super effective right for that whole thing i think you should actually listen to that soundtrack there might be some stuff I've, in there I, I didn't realize it was as it's um, really good yeah it, it kind of stood out a little bit for me um ape out yeah i that, forgot about this did you play this yeah oh have you this, okay the, it is the soundtrack is the thing that stands out the most yeah. in that game to me um it's is, it is a really cool little thing like it's a great idea of your this huge gorilla escaping this test yeah. facility or whatever but the music is just putting it to big band jazz is a uh... but it, specifically biz band drumming yeah that sorry. is that is I, I think a thing that even when you take it in isolation like jazz drumming and stuff like that is its own whole world oh yeah yeah, yeah of for sure. improvisation and these whole other like thing to then make it in a similar way to untitled goose game mm. to make it placated uh, not placated but directly related to gameplay yes. is like the gorilla moving through he has his like little snare yeah, yeah. rhythm that he goes through Still. that changes from level to level yeah, yeah and then when shit starts hitting the fan and like people are firing guns at you and he's hitting the hi-hat and hitting the symbols yeah, and stuff yeah. like that it suddenly becomes this weird performance art yeah of your dynamically creating this jazz drum improvisation thing that's awesome how like, much how does it change over the stages so it it, it it still ends up being jazz drums, but it's jazz drums with like a different bass. Right. So it, like the it, as I was saying, like the gorilla moving is like the snare pattern. Yeah. So different snare patterns and different levels mm-hmm. that then you improvise over based on. It's still like when they fire a gun, it's a hi hat. Yeah, yeah. But it changes because it has this different grounding. Right. Right. Um. It's awesome. It's such a cool thing. Yeah. Totally. That um. That really fits the style as well of this weird sort of like grainy film blasted yeah. color thing. It's like it's like every jazz vinyl cover you've yeah, ever exactly. seen. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's right. the cover of this weird jazz movie. There's this a ja- name. This jazz album that you find. There's in... a name. There's, there's a guy that did a lot of those jazz covers that had that style. I can't, I can't remember his name. I watched. Something yeah, it was of. it was the thing that impressed me the most about that game. Cool. It's super cool. Like it's really cool. Cool. So what do we want for our three? How? I think Outer Wilds has to be there. I agree. It does. Yes. Because I, I really agree. even not playing that game, I really like that soundtrack. Yeah. We need to have the Devil May Five Cry Five. Oh God, no, 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 no. You're not even going to fight for it being terrible that... enough to make the top three. Well, if it's weird because like is this it, is what I'm saying. Like it's it... supposed this is supposed to be a list of like here are the best game soundtracks. Devil May Five Cry Five is one of the best game soundtracks, but in context. Remember that this is also best use of music. It uses the music really well. Uh, I'm just, I, I'm not, I like, I don't give a okay, shit. Well, I'm not, just saying. I'll, I'll think about it a little bit. Um, um, does Wild Hearts make it on? No, no? I, not, I, not in terms of a full soundtrack. Again, like I said, I'll fight for a couple of tracks later, sure. but not as a full soundtrack. Um, I really want Hitting This Bass Out Law. Really? Yeah. I did not realise you... Oh, it's, the soundtrack's great. Okay. It's so, it is like, it's... It's not the sort of thing where it's like, I'm going to put this on and listen no, to totally. it. No, totally. But it's just like, you put that thing on and you're right there. The word, like evocative is, is the right word. It's yeah. that era. You're right there. Thing. You're looking on that internet page. You remember all those shitty websites that you've been on when totally. you were a kid fucking yep. about with the internet for the yep. first time. Um. Then the third one. Is it Goose Game? So it's, this was the thing is that if you discount Devil May Cry 5 because at its core Devil May Cry 5 is garbage. At its core, it's no good. At yes. its core, it is terrible. It's either, to me, Goose Game or Ape Out, because they use music so, so we well. So di- are we discounting Elysium, because I thought that was going to be a fight? I like the soundtrack in it, but it isn't the thing that that game okay. does the best. Cool. It's the, the the thing that that game deserves will happen later. Sure. 
Um, um, for me, I, it's either ga- it's either ape out or goose game. I can only. I mean, I've only seen ape out. I haven't tried it myself. Yeah. But for me, like, good it, again. It was me going. There's no way they're going to do that trailer treatment for the whole game, and it working. Yeah, is really is the I, thing I, for me. I'm I'm okay with with okay. game being it because also the the thing that I like in it is that it's the the piano is like playful enough to where yeah, it adds so to like, the comedy of that game. Yeah, and it, it is, adds it adds an extra level of comedy. Yeah, and the, I'm okay with that. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So what wins? <sighs> I of those three, it's probably Outer Wilds. I that's kind of where I'm feeling. Yeah. Well, like because in the space it wasn't entirely a me thing. Yeah. But, um, and again, like when I explain one of the moments later yeah um I, I think that'll that'll become clearer as well but like there's just like i the nature of that game being on a loop i listen to that initial like space music like a lot yeah and it's still great yeah it's still really good mm-hmm. so i'm cool with that yeah i'm fine cool so it's best soundtrack is outer wilds not outer worlds not outer worlds. not the outer world <laughs> outer wilds with hypnospace outlaw and until goose game did you finish hypnospace outlaw uh i got pretty far into it i didn't finish it right i got um, i got i got to the point where uh people on the internet started not really taking a lot of your shit and yeah. started like revolting and stuff that was yeah i need to finish that i was what i've reading something i can't remember if it was like on this the steam like um uh the steam like news thing where they were talking and it was like yeah we kind of fucked up some of the the developers were like yeah we could have made some of the gameplay bit a bit better to let people get further into yeah, it the, it's a thing they said they were actively considering for a patch later is like they're, we'll they're, they're, the... yeah yeah that's fair so we'll see but yeah no it's cool, cool. awesome Outer Wilds best soundtrack great, great.